Today on Locked On A's, we're celebrating 500 with Jacob DeGrubb signing with the Texas Rangers, as well as talking about the best prospect or player that the A's can get in exchange for Sean Murphy because he's probably getting traded fairly soon. So let's keep talking about it. Why not? Let's get into it, you guys. How's it going, A's fans? And welcome to episode 500 of the Locked On A's podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, noted baseball fan, Jason Burke. And on today's show, Jacob DeGrom literally just signed with the Texas Rangers. So we're going to, that, that's the first segment today. We're talking about that and how that impacts the A's and the rest of the AL West. And then we're going to be talking uh, about the thing that we were supposed to talk about today, and that is the best player that the A's can get in exchange for Sean Murphy from the five teams that have been linked to Sean Murphy. Uh, there, there are other teams out there, but the five that have been, you know, showing interest. We're going to talk about the trade packages that I've laid out for you guys here over the course of the last couple of weeks and uh, pick the best player and say, that's the guy that's the best player and then move on. Uh, and then uh, that that's, that's the episode actually. <laughs> There's nothing more. That, that, that's the episode. Uh, but before we get into anything, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online because Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Also, uh, you should start off your day here at Locked On Ace with your first listen of the day. Uh, because we're free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. So go to YouTube if you're not there currently. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, comment, like, do those things. And then also make sure to follow us on social media at Locked On A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter. And make sure to follow Inside the A's on Twitter and on Facebook. It is a site that I run in affiliation with Sports Illustrated. It, it's got you covered for A's news and analysis all the time. There are so many Sean Murphy trade packages uh, up there currently, and that is where I'm pulling some of this stuff from. So if you like what I talk about in the second segment, uh, that, that, that there's more of that over there. So go check it out. Uh, but let's talk about Jacob DeGrom signing a huge deal with the Texas Rangers. Uh, he's 34 years old, I believe. He signed like 20 minutes ago, so I didn't like look up his age <laughs> or, you know, his stats because I've got some stuff to talk about uh, when it comes to Jacob DeGrom here. Uh, his, the, the contract is five years, $185 million, which is a lot of money. Uh, that is $37 million a season. And uh, wow, the, the Rangers are just throwing money at, at like top tier free agents. Before it was like a mid to top tiers. And now it's like a Jacob DeGrom tiers. Uh, so good for him and them, I guess. Um, I, I said that I really wanted to make Bryce Patterick cry by signing Joey Gallo. I don't know that his spirit can be broken now that he is, that they've spent so much money and holy crap. What? Just holy crap. Uh, good job Rangers, I suppose. Uh, but I think that it was actually the A's that made him sign with the Texas Rangers. And, uh, here's why. Jacob DeGrom made his first visit to the Oakland Alameda County, uh, Oakland Alameda County uh, Coliseum at the end of this last season. And uh, he, he pitched against the A's for the first time. And he sucked. Uh, he went four innings, gave up six hits, five earned runs. He walked four, struck out five. Uh, he got the loss in that game. And I, I got to say, as an A's fan, it kind of feels like he wants to go stick it to the A's for beating him once and him having an 0-1-1 record. He... He's uh he he really wants to get vengeance on the A's and Ken Waldachuk because Ken Waldachuk won that game, got his first big league win in that game. So congrats to Ken Waldachuk yet again. Uh, they're 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 always going to be linked in my head. Ken Waldachuk and Jacob Degrom. That that's a that's a link. And also, uh, Ken Waldachuk has to be licking his chops now that Jacob Degrom and Shohei Otani, the two players that he has wins against in his big league career, the only two players that he has big wins against in his big league career are now in his division. He gets to just beat up on them all the time. Ken Waldachuk, uh, I know that the Rangers and uh, Jacob DeGrom, uh, they, they, he's he's happy because he, he has $185 million. The Rangers are happy because uh, they get Jacob DeGrom. And Ken Waldachuk is happy because he gets to go beat up on Jacob DeGrom more often. So everybody's a winner in this deal. Uh, he has a career uh, 252 ERA. 
Yeah, not not Ken Waldachek <laughs> on this one. Uh, Jacob Degrom has a career 252 ERA. That's really good. That's a good ERA uh, against the A's. It's over nine. It's over nine. So yeah, uh, I, I'm sure that other fan bases are going to be terrified of the Jacob Degrom signing. But uh, I'm looking over here. I'm like, what's the big deal? He seems really beatable to me. Um, granted, he didn't have a lot of control when he walked four guys in that game. But hey. Let, let me have this win, because uh, things aren't looking better yet. Uh, I don't think that the A's are signing Aaron Judge, no matter how much we will that into existence uh, or joke about it. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, DeGrom, whatever. Not not a big deal. Uh, maybe maybe I'll tell him that to his face. No, I'm not going to do that. That, that would be mean, because this is a joke, and I'm not serious. He's actually a really good pitcher, and I'm a little bit scared for the future of the A's franchise. <laughs> but... I thought that that was a, a fun spin on the Jacob DeGrom signing is, yeah, we, we faced him, and uh, the 2022 A's beat the snot out of him. They, they won that game like 10-3 to 3 or something like that. It was, a, it was a blowout and a Jacob DeGrom start by the 2022 Oakland A's. <laughs> uh, I love it. Anyways, coming up on the show, we're going to be talking about the best prospect or player that the A's could get in a trade or in, when they trade when they trade Sean Murphy, probably by the end of next week. So let's get into that in just a minute. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. And BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Uh, get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all over at BetOnline.net. If you're interested in placing a little friendly wager on the USA beating the Netherlands on Saturday morning at the crack of dawn at 6 a.m. I'm not waking up for that. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not waking up. I, the, the kid will wake up at 7. I'll catch the second half. It's fine. Uh, but if you're interested in that, Bet Online has you covered. And then you can sleep in and see if you won some money. And if you love sports podcasts, and I'm guessing that you do because you're listening to one currently, you can find those over at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix and wake up and just have money. Uh, so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more because bet online to where the game starts, my friends. Welcome back to the Locked On Ace podcast. If you guys are enjoying the show, uh, make sure to subscribe first. Why that? Do that. And then also go find us over on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel over there. It is growing so rapidly. Uh, so go do more. We're up to like 540 something. So join the hundreds of A's fans or baseball fans that find this enjoyable and uh, go subscribe over there. Leave a comment or, you know, a thumbs up or do do those things. Uh, also, make sure to follow us on social media at Locked on A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter. Uh, make sure to follow Inside the A's on Twitter or on Facebook as well. So you never miss an article over there. It's all it's more A's news and analysis. If you're if you're into that kind of thing, I've got you covered over at Inside the A's. But let's talk about some of these I've made a bunch of trade proposals. I've, I've had a couple of guests on. I've talked to JD from Locked On Cardinals. I've talked to uh, Nick from Locked On White Sox. We, we did some of those things. I got a trade proposal from Jeff Ellis of Locked On Guardians. So, yeah, I, I've worked some of this stuff out. I, I, I've conferred, and these are fairly approved deals. I, I didn't talk to the Red Sox people because uh, I, I didn't think that uh, they were serious suitors. But, hey, I made a trade for them anyway. But uh, th these are all approved deals, I would say. So I'm not just shooting from the hip. I'm actually uh, doing a little bit of research here. And I, I wrote these up uh, over at Inside the Ace. So if you want to read these as opposed to just uh, hearing a bunch of names of rapid fire, uh, that, that's where you can find these. But there, there's some good prospects involved because Sean Murphy is worth some good prospects. I know that he's a career 236 hitter, as people on Twitter love to point out all the time. Uh, but... He's also, uh, he hit 250 last year, and that was his most recent season. He's still uh, 28 years old, which is really good. He's re he's arguably the second best backstop in the entirety of baseball, so there's that. Uh, he was also a three-something win, like a 3.1 win player. He he's a solid player, you guys. He's really, really good. He's going to get some top 100 prospects, or maybe a major league guy that used to be a top 100 prospect. He's going to get some talent back for the A's, and, you know... Yay! <laughs> Ace baseball, waiting on the future, as always. Uh, meanwhile, the Rangers signed Jacob DeGrom for five years, 185. So, 
two two franchises heading in different directions. Thanks, John Fisher. Um, so let's talk about each of these trades. I'm, I'm just going to read off. I'm not going to get into who everybody is. Hopefully you guys have watched or know a little bit about them. If you if you haven't, uh, g go check out Inside the A's. Uh, they're there. Just read about all of these players. I'll link to the stuff in the show notes if you're on the audio version. But the Boston Red Sox, they, they have an interesting... They're, they're taking a different tact, I would say. I, I would say. And also, uh, Steve Berman of The Athletic, he also wrote this up uh, today, I believe. So after I said it, but, you know, whatever. He said that uh, Brian Bella would probably be the centerpiece of a Sean Murphy deal uh, on a Red Sox article that he was asked to comment on. Because the Red Sox beat writer, oh man, that was a low ball offer. I had never heard of those prospects. Um, like Nick York, he's, I, I mean, I've heard of him. Uh, and then like some other uh, B-level guys, I'm like, and he's like, uh, that's laughably low. So no, actually, it'd probably take Brian Bellow, and I don't think you guys want to trade him, but let's keep talking about Brian Bellow. And good job, Steve. <laughs> but Brian Bellow, he would be the best prospect in the Red Sox package, according to me. Uh, and also the package that I laid out, because it would also have uh, Blyce and David Hamilton. Hamilton is a speed guy. He's more of a throw-in. I, I didn't get excited about the return from the Red Sox, which is partially why I think that they're not serious, because the, the main guy in this deal, I don't think that they want to trade either. So uh, they, they're not going to get Sean Murphy, I don't think. That that that, that seems like a far-fetched idea. I think the Braves might actually have a better chance of getting Sean Murphy than the Red Sox do, because the Red Sox, uh, I don't know where they are. The, the Braves are trying, and they would... Uh, trade for Sean Murphy and then trade one of their catchers for some other pieces and do some other stuff over there. Uh, and that's a, an actual thing that Ken Rosenthal wrote. So they, they actually did check in on Sean Murphy. I don't think that he's going to go there either. And I really would like to spread out where the players go. And like different teams. I, I like the different teams aspect of this. Trade them to the Rays. Trade them to Cleveland. Do, do other teams. Don't always go to, like, the Yankees. That's boring. I don't want to root for the Yankees. Sorry, Frankie. Uh, <laughs> but moving on to the White Sox, different team. And the A's have done well in trades with them in the past, which I like. Uh, because <laughs> uh, they traded, like, Addison Russell for Jeff Samarja. Uh, and then also a bunch of other guys. So including uh, Marcus Simeon and Chris Bassett, who were, you know, recently free agents and making lots of money. So that was a good trade for the A's. And don't forget about Rangel Ravello, also in that deal. Also, Josh Fagley was in that deal, too. But great deal for the A's from the White Sox. Love to see it. Uh, but the centerpiece for me would probably be Andrew Vaughn. If they didn't want Andrew Vaughn, then it would be Oscar Colas. Uh, Col Col Colas. Uh, so one of those two guys would be the best prospect or player in this deal, uh, followed by Uelki, uh Cespedes. And then th there's a kid named Burke. He's a pitcher. I picked, I, I put him in there because his last name is the same as mine. I like that. I get his jersey. It'd be great. Uh, and then there's uh, McDougal. He was also solid. But their farm system's not stellar, other than Colas, who's 24 years old and just signed in January of 2022. Uh, he made it all the way up to AAA. But, I mean, I don't know that the White Sox necessarily want to take away another outfielder, which is a position that they actually need for catcher, which is something that you could debate whether or not they do need a new catcher because they do have Yasmani Grandal for one more year and, you know, whatever. Uh, and also, Andrew Vaughn is there. And he's good, but his defense is scary. So uh, he's got a good bat. So does uh, Colas, but I, I, I don't know. So I'm intrigued to see. I don't think he's going to the White Sox either, but hey, I, I, I'd be intrigued to see what that package looks like, and it better have Cespedes in it. Uh, that is Ioannis Cespedes' little brother. He's 25, I believe. Uh, he's got a cannon of an arm, obviously, and uh, I I want another Cespedes on the A's in 2023. Uh, La Potencia, or uh, Small Potencia? I, my Spanish isn't working right now. Anyways, Tampa Bay. Uh, the package that I uh, put forth included one of two first basemen, either Jonathan Aranda or uh, Kyle Manzardo. That's the, that's the guy's first name. Uh, but just because uh, coming off of writing about the the White Sox and Andrew Vaughn, I was like, this is a nice comp for that player. He has more years. They both have more years of control. Uh, they're both good, and uh, they play better defense. So I thought that that was a nice comp. If the A's wanted Andrew Vaughn, maybe they could go in this direction instead with the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, then there's Mike Montgomery, and then Junior Caminero is the, the best prospect in that trade. So you got uh, Bello, Vaughn, and Caminero so far as the best prospects available in each of these packages. And Caminero, he's like 19 years old. He's a young kid. He hasn't played 
a lot in professional baseball, but uh, he, his ceiling is really high, and it's all a matter of if he can, constro- can, can, can control the strike zone. Uh, that's going to be what determines what kind of a future this kid has, and I don't know that the, the Rays would necessarily want to give up on that uh, for Sean Murphy, but... Holy crap, uh, he, he's got some tools, and I would be thoroughly interested in getting him. Um, it, or the A's could just wait a couple of years until, you know, he's Rule 5 eligible and they don't have room for him because they're so talented. And uh, then the A's could just go get him then. I don't know. It, whatever works for the A's, that, that'd be great. Or the race. Uh, and then Vidal Brujan would probably be the, the last kicker piece in that one. And I'm not, like, super excited about Vidal Brujan, but I, I take him. I take him. Why not? Uh, St. Louis and... Cleveland are the last two teams, and they have very interesting full packages. And the Rays have a, an interesting full package as well. Don't don't cut that and edit that, please. Full packages. <laughs> uh, but St. Louis, the, the main piece for them would be Mason Wynn. And uh, when I proposed that to Locked On uh, Cleveland, uh, not sorry, <clears throat> when I proposed that to Locked On Cardinals uh, host JD, he was like, I don't know, Mason Wynn's pretty good, and. Uh, in the two weeks since we've talked, he has talked about trading Mason Wynn so many times because uh, he really wants Sean Murphy now. So uh, th- I think that that would probably be where you start that deal. They're not going to get Jordan Walker, I don't think. I think that Jordan Walker is kind of an untouchable guy. But Mason Wynn for this guy, for Sean Murphy, I think is touchable. I think he's touchable. <laughs> uh, and then you got Matthew Liebertor, who is good. It feels like he has to be in this deal, and I'm not, like, excited about him, but he's he's a guy who's been fine, I guess. Maybe they should do something with him, but I'm not, like, super excited. And then Tink Hentz would be the other piece in that deal, and I, I am excited about Tink Hentz. Uh, one, great name, Tink Hentz. Uh, two, he strikes out a lot of guys, and he's young, and uh, I he throws gas. I, I like that. Uh, and then Cleveland, you got George Valera, uh, Brian Rocchio, Logan Allen, and uh, Cody Morris, and that, that was the... The package that Jeff Ellis sent over, and I was like, "Yeah, that's a that's a good package." Because George Valera is a really good player, and uh, I I would like to see him in green and gold. Honestly, um, it, I think that the A's probably need to go outfield if they're going to be going for a prospect. Um, and George Valera is an outfielder. That's solid. Uh, Caminero is a third baseman, and Win is a shortstop with a cannon of an arm. He can throw it over a hundred from from shortstop. Uh, there's there's videos of that, and holy crap, he has a kid. Um, but the A's also have Nick Allen, and if they believe in Nick Allen, then you don't necessarily, and, and his hit tool developing, um, then you don't really need to get another guy who, you, you know he can play defense, but also has a questionable bat. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of intrigue there. I, I don't know where they go, but the five best prospects from these five trades are Bello, Vaughn, Caminero, Wynn, and Valera, and... Vaughn and Bello, uh, they're, they're both good players. I'd be happy with either one. But both of them are already in the major leagues. Vaughn has four years of control left, and uh, Bello has five because they have both been in the majors at least the last, the last year. So team control would not be the full six years that I'm sure the A's would love to have in trading Sean Murphy. So that takes them out in my eyes. Um, and then Caminero and Wynn, they have the highest ceilings, I think. They, they could really turn into something special. Those could be very, like, superstar level players. But there's a lot of questions still on their game. And that, that worries me as a centerpiece in this deal, the last deal that the A's can probably make to really supplement their farm system and make it to, the, the hopefully, the finish line uh, for, their, for their next uh, run at, at you know, a wild card or maybe even a World Series. So this is kind of the last big move that the A's can make. And so that means that George Valera, uh, he feels like the most plug and play guy available to the A's in trading John Murphy. And that makes the Guardians the most suitable, ca- uh, you know, trade partner, I think. And also the, the trade package in general was a very solid one, I thought. Um, but I think that George Valera has the highest floor and ceiling combination. So even if he doesn't reach his ceiling, he's still got a high floor, which means he'd still be a good player. Uh, whereas Mason Wynn might be like a, a, a defense guy and with like a little bit of a hit tool. I, we'll see. Um, and that scares me. And Caminero is still very young. A lot of stuff can go wrong. The A's have traded for Franklin Barreto in the past. I've said it before. Um, so... Yeah, I think that's where I'm landing. I think that George Valera is the best prospect the A's can get. And Cleveland, I mean, depending on how you like some of these players, 
they probably offer the best package because they're they have a very deep system and also the A's have been going after players like the ones that Cleveland likes and so I think that it makes sense for them to match up on a trade because that's who the A's are emulating. Um, I, I also like the Tampa Bay one because Caminero, if Caminero is part of that deal, I'd like that trade a lot. Uh, Manzardo is also an interesting guy, but with Tyler Soderstrom coming up, do you want another first baseman? I, the, I'll go over this on a future episode, maybe next week. Um, but the A's are potentially set at a few different spots with some of the pros, some of their own prospects that they have. And so you don't necessarily want to have like, Hey, we got like three second basemen now. I, you have a bunch of guys that could just move to second base. You know, Jordan Diaz is probably going to try it out, and he's really good. He doesn't have a position, and I'd like to see more Jordan Diaz. So, I don't know. He's still 21 years old. He's still so young. Huh. Anyways, uh, coming up on the show, I'm going to talk about uh, the Jacob deGrom impact potentially on the Sean Murphy deal. So, uh, let's get into that here in just a second. Welcome back to the Locked on Ace podcast. If you're enjoying the show and you've made it this far, please... Uh, leave us a five-star review on your platform of choice or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave us a comment uh, over there because that also helps. That's like leaving a review, I think, as long as it's nice. Pl- say nice things. Uh, it's episode 500 and we're not really celebrating that much. Um, I had some stuff planned and then I was like, hey, let's talk about Sean Murphy getting traded again. Uh, so maybe I'll do like a reflection episode next week as well. I got some ideas. We'll, we'll talk about it at some point when the news clears up because Sean Murphy is getting traded soon and we should probably talk about that instead and then I'll have my own sentimental moments a little bit later. But also make sure to follow us on social media at Locked on A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter and Inside the A's is where you can get more A's news and analysis from this guy. Um, so go check out that site and check us out on uh, Twitter at Inside the A's. But let's talk about the Jacob deGrom signing right now because... Um, I mean, we already did, and I made some jokes, and they were hilarious jokes. But with this signing, I mean, we we have the Houston Astros in the division, and they are the reigning World Series champions. Uh, They they have made it to the ALCS 50 years in a row. Every year since I became a man. (laughs) Uh, Somebody's been like, it's only been six years. I'm like, eh, well, dang it. Uh, And then you got the Texas Rangers. They're spending gobs of money on like good players are they going to be good we'll see but they're trying like really hard so that's that's another thing and then seattle they're they're close they've got a very young and exciting team they're they're making moves all the time jerry depoto is going to make like 50 more trades before uh, the season starts so they're always churning and burning and then the angels i wrote lol um because they might uh, i mean if they're healthy they're probably maybe not probably, maybe a, a wild card team, uh, and then they might actually just let Shohei Otani walk. They're they've got some some thing. They're get, like changing owners. They got a bunch of things going on. So the Angels, they might finish in last place this season with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. Hey, we'll see. But that is three really good teams that are in the same division with the A's currently, and the A's are hoping to be competitive in the next couple of years. You would imagine, and uh, these teams are, are not going anywhere. So. Do they just start pushing their own chips in and see where the, see where they fall uh, a little bit later on, or do they try and take a little like a slight step back and go for guys that are in the lower minors that might take a couple more years to develop uh, and see what happens there and kind of rethink what they were planning on going after in a Sean Murphy deal? Maybe they can get like seven guys that are in the low minors and are, you know are, are pre breakouts. Uh, as opposed to getting like a George Valera, maybe they can get like three, maybe George Valeras instead. Uh, m- m- not not that they, they wouldn't be able to get like three, maybe George Valeras. That's not gonna happen. But three guys, they like, ah, eh, maybe like one of these guys hits, and then you have more more darts to throw, kind of thing. Maybe that's what they're thinking, and uh, they take a little bit longer to develop because uh, maybe in twenty twenty six, the other teams in the division might be bad by then. We'll see. Um, with other teams, I think that they would push their chips in along with the other teams. You see it in the AL West all the time. Or, sorry, in the AL East all the time. Uh, they're just like, yeah, here, here's my best team. The, the Toronto Blue Jays uh, do it all the time. Uh, the Orioles are you know, pushing their chips in currently. Uh, but the A's don't spend money, and they're not going to spend money for a minute. And uh, I, 
that I think that that's the differentiator right there. And the front office has to kind of pick and choose their spots a little bit more. They have to be more calculated. And so uh, I, I am intrigued to see if the Jacob deGrom signing and what the Rangers are doing has any impact on what the A's end up doing in the Sean Murphy deal. And uh, that, that was just my final thought on that. And I, I'm intrigued. I, I, I don't want Sean Murphy to get traded, but I kind of want it to happen sooner rather than later because uh, I, I want to know what the A's are getting. And uh, what we're, you know, what the timeline is looking like from the point of view of the front office. That, that's what I want to know because they've got some prospects. You know, we should see Soderstrom and Galoff up uh, probably second half of 2023. And then they've got some guys at the major league level. Are they going to be competitive in 2024? Maybe, but I want to see what, what else the A's got coming. If they also go out and get George Valera and then he also comes up. Oh, man, 2024. That's uh, that's the A's year right there. We'll see. <laughs> but that that is that's where I'm leaving today's episode. Episode 500. We made They never said they said we wouldn't make it. But oh, man, we did take that. They. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, for anybody who's been around for most or some of the 500, thank you for listening because I enjoy doing this and uh, I know that I'm a little scatterbrained, as you can see uh, when I'm recording live, but uh, I, I enjoy doing this and you guys are making it like a reality. So thank you so much for, for everything. Uh, I'll do a more heartfelt, you know, episode 500 recap uh, at, at a future date. But for now, because a lot of things have happened, you guys, <laughs> since I started doing this. Uh, and so we'll, we'll talk about those on a future episode. But we're running out of time, and it's the weekend, and Jacob DeGrom just signed somewhere else. So we all got to go drink. <laughs> uh, but that's all that I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for making Locked On A's your first listen of the day. For your second listen, go check out the Locked On Sports of the Day podcast because it, they have the biggest stories of the day and the biggest takes and game recaps and also the take of the day that only uh, Locked On can do because we have we have the goods, you guys, over at Locked On. So uh, go, go check it out on any podcast provider that you want because it's everywhere locked on taking over the world <laughs> anyways uh that's all that i got for you guys today thank you again for listening to 500 episodes of this and uh hopefully jacob de Grom doesn't come back with too much of a uh, vengeance because that would make me sad but uh that that's it for today uh go out and celebrate good times ace fans and i'll talk with you guys on monday <laughs>